We're just over Yoronga now, uh, Wendy, and uh, you know, I think you can see there the extent of you know how much this water is encroaching beyond where it should be. You know, it's it's breaking its banks all the way along and moving into the houses, just seeping its way through dozens and dozens, well, not dozens, hundreds of homes. And, you know, as you've probably heard, you know, there were so many people now in evacuation centres and they're expecting those numbers to swell dramatically over the next 24 hours as as we reach those twin peaks, so to speak. You know, we've got the peak at four o'clock tomorrow morning when the tide comes up, another peak the following day. And, uh, you know, you can you can just see the extent of it here. And I think we're looking at... Uh, well, that's the University of Queensland, the one of the main universities in Queensland. I mean, normally the University of Queensland's a beautiful spot. You know, the yeah. river just skirts around its perimeter, but you know, it's just come right up the banks and right into the middle of it. And of course, um, you know, some bad news for students. Uh, the, I think classes, uh, any summer classes, have been called off. But uh, you know, it, that place is going to face a massive cleanup. I mean, the the water has intruded so far into the campus; it's quite remarkable. And you know, that's just typical of what we're seeing all the way along the river, all the way around the city. You know, so many made, there are hundreds, literally hundreds of roads cut in Brisbane, and it makes getting around for anyone from any for any distance almost impossible. So even though there are lots of areas that are still high and dry. Um, uh, you know, the river, in so many ways, it wends its way, it winds its way through the city in these big S bends. So it really does impact on the ability of people to get around the city. And of course, that's why the authorities are saying, if you don't need to travel, don't, because, um, you know, there are just so many trouble spots. I mean, we were hearing this morning that uh, this very helicopter was getting shots of cars, you know, racing along particular roads, and then all of a sudden all the cars screaming to a halt because suddenly they realised, well, they couldn't get through because there was water over the road. Wow. You know, iconic roads like Coronation Drive. So, you know, th th those pictures there really show you just how much the, the, the water has moved into the, the heart of the city. I think, as you just mentioned, Coronation Drive, that was the one that did it for me. When I saw the vision of, of Coronation Drive with the water uh, right over Coronation Drive, I was amazed. But now to see these live shots uh, and to see UQ, the University of Queensland, the uh, majority of, of it underwater, the sporting grounds, uh, a lot of the buildings there that, that house the students for their classes, that is equally as unbelievable. I am I'm shaking my head in, in the studio. I cannot believe what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, I mean, Wendy, I know what you mean. I feel the same way. I mean, we were, we were told this was going to happen. We, we've heard all the stories about 74. I mean, it's it's become such a, a part of the fabric, fabric of Brisbane's history, what happened in 1974. And when the people started seriously yesterday, the Premier and the Lord Mayor started saying, this will be as bad or worse than 74, it's hard to get your head around it. But, you know, seeing is believing. And, and what we're seeing makes you a believer. I mean, this is... This is heading for the 74 sort of level and uh, you know as we heard just momentarily ago uh, it, it could be worse so you know there's there's no doubt that uh, Brisbane faces an enormous challenge to keep all its residents safe and as much property as it can safe over the next 24 hours or so and of course that's before any thought of cleanup and the enormous task that lies ahead in that sense. Yeah, so uh, for people at home that are just joining us, what you're seeing there on your screen, uh, we've got Phil Wilmington, a Brisbane reporter, up in the Channel 9 chopper at the moment, flying over parts of the city that are inundated with water right now. We've also just heard from Neil Roberts, the Emergency Services Minister. Uh, he held a briefing uh, with the latest details on behalf of Anna Bly. Uh, he said, Neil Roberts said, that the Brisbane River and this will explain why these pictures are so telling. The Brisbane River is now at 4.16 metres and rising, which is the key point there, it's rising. Uh, he also said the river is expected to peak at 5.5, possibly in excess of 5.5. That's expected at 4 a.m., so 4 a.m. for tomorrow morning. So uh, you can see how bad it is now. There are so many hours until, until we actually reach the point where it will peak. Now, uh, the problem is, Neil Roberts told us, the Emergency Services Minister, that when it reaches that peak, 5.5 or more, 
It's going to stay that way, he says, for about 12 to 18 hours. That peak will remain for that period of time, which is which is terrible because people, you just can't get your life back to normal if it's remaining and, and the damage caused will be unbelievable, Phil.